Chapter 1 The Celestial Duo Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a with a young girl one day. This girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma. I'm and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl bo borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turning into days and then years, but still the sky relieved nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to the Luma, if we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship, and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the celestial mother began. Or celestial, I don't know how to pronounce that C word. Chapter 2, Star Bits. Days passed with no sight of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was to going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials, telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea. But I forgot to bring water. At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter and the little girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh and the girl couldn't help but join in. All right, maybe just a nibble. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. Chapter 3 The Comet A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get to that comet! The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop 
utterly unable to take another step. Look. Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing the girl, so the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there's water here, too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their speech, I mean, I mean, their search for Luma's mother. Chapter 4, The Dream One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going, she asked to her mother's retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you, like the sun in the sky and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness wa washed over the girl. What about it rains when I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When, when she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said, the Luma, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, these are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh, Mama, why? The pair traveled through the starry skies, and through though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was disappointed. Was despondent, I think. Now, Luma, now, now, Luma, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said. Giving the Luma a squeeze, I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5 Home The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there. The girl said busily to herself, We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she'd been bustling about at a fear, feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture unlike any they had ever seen and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, a bedroom, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate, it was certainly Spacious, or spacious, however you pronounce that word, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully, and, and indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. 
That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Chapter 6, Friends Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot-colored planet appeared in the horizon. From that planet, from the planet, Another luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two lumas neither drew closer nor back to, away from each other. Instead, they just started. Then the uh, l then one Luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot Luma parodied, parodied back, My mama, my mama! My mama, my mama! So the two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, frantically, and neither showed a uh, showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh. And that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama, my mama. The sight of all the shouting lumas only made the little the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The lumas just started blankly as she doubled her laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you Tomorrow, once she had finished naming all, them all, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the, the new home. I mean, the new house. <laughs>